Pyansys is a set of technologies in the Python ecosystem that provide an API or application programming interface to several ANSYS flagship products and data processing frameworks for working with simulation data. PyMaterial is one such technology that's offered under PyANSYS umbrella. In this video, we'll discuss what is PyMaterial, what are its applications and who is it useful for, how to install and launch PyMaterial. Finally, we'll learn a simple model using PyMaterial and demonstrate its interactive plotting capability. Let's get started. Python is a versatile open source scripting platform that's used in several applications such as web development, scientific computing, data science and visualization, artificial intelligence and machine learning applications to name a few. On the other hand, Mechanical APDL or informally shortened as MAPDL is an industry leading general purpose finite element solver that's used for structural, thermal, electromagnetic, acoustics and other multiphysics simulations. It also has built-in geometric modeling and meshing capabilities and supports parametric modeling. PyMAPDL is a Python API to access the MAPDL solver and its generated simulation data. It uses gRPC, which stands for Google Remote Procedure Call, which is an open source remote procedure call system developed by Google. Using this, it converts Python instructions into APDL commands that can then be transmitted to an MAPDL instance running anywhere. This allows a seamless integration between MAPDL and various Python packages, thereby bringing together the best of both worlds. It allows flexible distribution by enabling users to launch one, two, or a pool of MAPDL instances from anywhere using any device. It also enables flexible automation due to the ability to send command scripts to MAPDL directly, Pythonically, or even via legacy scripts. Due to these advantages, PyMaterial finds its use in several applications and engineering workflows. Let's look at a few of them and see where PyMaterial fits in. FE simulations are powerful, but they have a learning curve. By using PyMaterial, developers can build apps in the Python platform that can condense the workflow and therefore bring physics-based simulations to a wider audience. In addition, users can run these apps in the form of web apps, mobile apps, or even vertical apps using any device by accessing MAPDL from a remote server. Another area of interest is product design improvement and optimization. PyMAPDL gives engineers and scientists the ability to develop optimized, robust products by combining MAPDL's accurate physics-based simulations with the rich selection of advanced optimization and machine learning algorithms available in various Python packages. In fact, PyMAPDL can be used to train AI ML algorithms to predict and validate scenarios that may not have been considered in the original design. The possibilities of using PyMAPDL for product improvement, customer engagement, and reducing time to market are limited by one's imagination. Due to these reasons, PyMAPDL has a wide audience in the form of product engineers, software developers, researchers, students, and teachers with different personas finding users in one or more applications. PyMAPDL is used to issue APDL commands in Pythonic way. Therefore, to use PyMAPDL, one must install Python on their local system and have access to either a local installation of MAPDL or a server with MAPDL installed. PyMAPDL is supported on Python 3.6 through 3.9, and it's compatible with ANSYS MAPDL 17.0 and newer versions. For best results, we recommend to always use the current release. We recommend users to refer to Getting Started page or mapdl.pyanzas.com for most recent information. It's supported on most integrated development environments such as Visual Studio, Spider, or Jupyter Lab. In this course, we'll use Jupyter Lab for all our workshops. Once Python is installed on a system, the easiest way to install PyMAPDL is to open the Windows command prompt and type in pip install ANSYS MAPDL core. This installs the current version of PyMAPDL, and once the installation is complete, one can verify installation using these commands. These commands launch an instance of MAPDL 
and print the details of MAPDL license and version being used. One can exit this instance by issuing mapdl.exit. So the structure of a typical PyMAPDL script looks like this. One can also specify a working directory and a job name using this set of commands. Now let's begin the workshop where we launch a PyMAPDL instance and run a program to get a taste of it. In this demo, we'll set up a parametric model of a rectangular plate with multiple holes. The plate is modeled as 3D solid, so the thickness of the plate can be parameterized. One end is fixed and a pressure load is applied on the other end. The dimensions of the plate, number of holes and their radius, the material properties and the pressure applied are all parameterized. The learning objectives of this demo are to launch PyMAPDL on a local machine, to solve the parametric model using user-specified values, and to demonstrate interactive plotting of geometry, mesh, and results in Pythonic interface. Download the provided Jupyter notebook to a folder on your local system. In the file browser window, type cmd to open command prompt. If JupyterLab is not installed on the local system, you may first install it by typing the command pip install JupyterLab. Once it's installed, then you may issue the command JupyterLab to launch it. JupyterLab opens in the default browser. From the file browser, you can locate the downloaded Jupyter notebook and double click to open in a tab. As you can see, the code and the relevant comments are divided into different cells. We can either execute each cell individually or execute them all at once. For this demonstration, Let's execute all cells at once. We can see that the geometry is plotted and we can interact with it. PyMAPDL uses PyVTK in the background for interactive CAD plotting. One can rotate the part with left mouse button, use scroll to zoom in and out, and shift plus left mouse button to pan. As we scroll further down, we can see similar interactive plots for mesh and results too. These interactive plots are supported in other area IDs as well. So far, we have launched an instance of PyMAPDL, ran a model using user-specified parameters, and witnessed how to plot and interact with geometry, mesh, and results. This concludes the video on overview of PyMAPDL. We'll continue our learning in the next video.